I, I agree with Eric a lot that, for the most part, Frank was an ideal climbing partner. Um, although he could be a temperamental person. And um, with Eric, uh, maybe with Eric and Frank, everything went well. With me and Frank, it didn't always go well. Um, there was one climb that went, that went fine that uh, Frank and I and a guy named Larry Marshak went up and did a um, first free ascent of left side of Reed's Pinnacle. And uh, is that three pitch climb? I can't remember. But uh, I remember I had the second pitch, which was this long squeeze chimney you get way back in and come out of it. And then Frank had the top pitch, which was the crux. And um, sort of off with tricky jamming, and um, and he got up it. Oh, I remember. The funny thing was, is he got up and he was in there, and um, he wanted to put a piton in. He was in the squeeze chimney, and he could only tap the piton a little bit. You know, he couldn't really swing it. He just going tap, 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 tap. And he looks down and he said, a whole bunch of little taps as good as one or two big ones? <laughs> and I said, well, you're the physicist, Frank. <laughs> but anyhow, Frank got up it, and uh, I got up it with great difficulty. And, um, and then Larry started coming up, and uh, he just fell out of it, and he said, I can't do it. And, and, and immediately, Frank just took the rope and he swung and just pulled him right, just pulled him like a sack, like a haul bag, right up to the ledge. And uh, I got back down, think, and got to camp, and I said, "Wow, I really have confidence in Frank's belaying now. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen what he could do." And uh, it wasn't long after that that he dropped me 80 feet when I was following. And uh, I wrote that in Super Topo, but. <laughs> 